We've had some gorgeous eye candy over the poles, a pocket of fast solar wind that's bumped us to storm levels, and more activity looks like it's on its way. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com dot edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Our sun is definitely giving us a lot to look at in terms of space weather this week. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, you can see there's quite a few active regions and some coronal holes on the Earth-facing disk. But first, look at the poles right there on the 12th whoosh did you see that massive filament lift off that is a polar crown filament and on the next day on the 13th whoosh it's followed by another one these big eruptions are good signs that we are inching ever closer to solar maximum but meanwhile down at mid latitudes in the sun those are the regions that are going to give us a chance to have earth directed solar storms well right now we're not seeing a lot in terms of big eruptions however there's a couple regions like region 33 33 that we're watching very closely because it is a big flare player and there's some regions rotating into earth view here on the east limb that are also going to be big flare players however before that as we take a look at the coronal holes look we've got a coronal hole that's now rotated into the earth strike zone this one has already been sending us some fast solar wind and it has bumped us up to storm levels we're sitting at g1 levels right now we could actually bump up to g2 levels probably not over the next couple days but yeah g1 levels definitely and then things should taper off right around the 18th or so but that could give us some decent aurora possibly down to mid latitudes for a short bit and then believe it or not we've got another coronal hole in the south that's going to be rotating into the earth strike zone in the part of next week so we could over the next two weeks really begin to pick up in activity and at solar flux is also beginning to rise again and big solar flares are also on the menu now, taking a look at our far-sighted monitor of the sun, this is Stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. As we take a look at the sun from Stereo's view, on the west part of the sun, you can see that big coronal hole rotating to the west limb. That is the coronal hole that's sending Earth some fast solar wind right now and has bumped us up to storm levels. But if you look just to the east of that, you can see that snake-like filament. Now this filament, we've been watching it and it doesn't look like it's going to erupt like those beautiful polar crown filaments erupted, but it, it has been shedding some material and it's rotating through the Earth strike zone right now. So we are paying attention because it could be an Earth-directed solar storm if it chooses to erupt. Now looking to the east of that, you can see that coronal hole in the south and then, because that, that one's going to give us some fast solar wind here in about a week, and then take a look at the very far of the, part of the east limb. Look at all the bright regions. Now, some of those have already rotated into the Earth view, but we have a couple of them that are still on the sun's far side, and they are solar storm producers. In fact, as we take a look at the JSOC HMI Helioseismology far sighted viewer, you can see just over the past couple days, look at those dark regions. Those regions are the ones that are going to be rotating into Earth view here in about three and a half days in the south and about seven days in the north. They're definitely going to be helping bring that solar flux back up easily into the 160s, if not the 170s. That means amateur radio operators, you're going to have some decent propagation again on Earth's day side. Not that it's gone too far bad, but we are going to likely have more noise on the bands as well. So for day side radio propagation, you're going to have to deal with the potential for more radio blackouts here over this next couple weeks uh, as these new regions rotate into Earth view, but we also have the potential for more solar storms. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase with the new moon being on the 18th, and by the 21st on the summer solstice, the moon will only be about 10% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, now is your perfect chance. 
Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have some fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and that has bumped us up to storm levels over the past day or so, and will continue to do so. In fact, at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions, but we have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm, and this will last in through the 17th and begin to taper off around the 18th and then kind of go back to unsettled conditions. But we probably won't get much lower than that because we do have another coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone uh, as early as next week. So expect, if you're an aurora photographer at high latitudes, expect to get decent chances for aurora over this week and possibly into next. Now at mid latitudes, things are actually still pretty good. We are expecting a uh, minor storm levels, we only have about a uh, you know, 15% chance of minor storm levels over the next few days. Things are going to calm down a little bit faster. By the 18th, things should calm down and be back to unsettled conditions. But again, we could bump back up to storm levels starting around oh, at about the 21st or so because we have that other coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone. So aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, well, it's going to be a sporadic chase, but you could get an opportunity for some aurora if you are dedicated. Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we do have quite a few active regions in Earth view and a couple big flare players, including region 3333, 35, and 38. And as these regions grow, they're definitely boosting that solar flux. We're in the mid 150s and we could climb to the 160s and possibly into the 170s as we move into next week, it, especially with the new regions that are going to have yet to rotate into Earth view. Meanwhile, NOAA is giving us about a 20% chance of M-class flares over this next week. Uh, this is at an R1 to R2 radio blackout, so you can see we are having radio blackouts back on the menu. In fact, we even have about a 5% chance of X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout, and these trends will easily continue over this next week. They might even rise a little bit. We definitely are sitting at moderate noise uh, on the bands by the end of this week, and this means uh, amateur radio operators expect uh, you know quite a bit more activity but expect a bit more frustration. And GPS users definitely expect issues near dawn and near dusk over the next week and possibly two weeks before things settle back down. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the next week, we are dealing with a bunch of active regions in Earth view, but luckily none of the big flare players are anywhere near the west limb. This means we're all in the green when it comes to the potential for radiation storms. We're sitting at the S0 level right now. That's the D1 normal range. So we have no issues when it comes to radiation storms, and that's likely how it's going to continue easily over this next week. Everything is quiet. However, as we begin to move into next week, we're going to have more regions rotating into view, and more of the big flare players are going to rotate to that west limb. So expect to see the risk begin to rise as of next week. So aviation uh, industry and pilots, be aware everything is clear right now, and frequent flyers, you're all doing well. But pay more attention next week because conditions might change. So the space weather this week has given us a lot to talk about. Not only have we had some beautiful eye candy with those polar crown filaments erupting, but we also have that coronal hole that's rotated in through the Earth strike zone and it's sending us some fast solar wind. We're up at storm levels right now. We might bump up to G2 levels, probably not. We'll probably stay at G1 levels over the next couple days. This means Aurora could come down to mid latitude sporadically and give us some decent shows. Now things will calm down down over after, after about the 18th, but it won't become anything like quiet conditions. It'll probably be unsettled and then it'll rise again as we have yet another coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone. So aurora photographers, if you don't get something over the next couple days, well, hang tight. You could get something starting around the 20th and possibly into the 21st, and that could give us yet another chance for some more aurora. On top of that, we do have some big flare players and we do have a 
snake-like filament that we're watching. So there are more chances for solar storms uh, here over the next couple of weeks. Amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you're going to be dealing with a bit more noise on the bands as more active regions rotate into Earth view. It's going to boost that solar flux, but it's also going to boost those radio blackout potential as well. And now you GPS users, well, you know, we've got that fast solar wind that's that's giving us a bit of a blow right now that's going to give us some aurora on the night side. And now we've got this new risk with the radio blackouts coming up. So sadly, if you're anywhere near aurora, you could have GPS issues. That's going to be at mainly at high latitudes. Or if you're near dawn and dusk, you're also going to have to stay vigilant because GPS reception could also be a problem there. But just hang in there. Over the next couple weeks, things might be a little bit dicey, but it will get better. I'm Tam with the Scope, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.